Okay, for uh, today's webinar topic, we're going to be talking about wise uh, forecasting. And for our agenda, what we're going to be covering is the planning module. We'll open up that module, show you what the screens look like, review some of the buttons, and then look at it at some of the examples of how forecasting can be done uh, using the various types of forecasting that we offer. Uh, after we go through the planning module, what we'll do is jump over to the module configuration. There are some setups required for this. Uh, we can point those out, and if we have some techies that are interested in those configurations, we'll speak to them briefly. Uh, we can also schedule any um, additional follow-up calls if you're interested in the assistance in configuring. Uh, that configuration there is just to point out where the data is coming from, and we can assist with any uh, implementations of the WISE planning module as needed. Uh, lastly, we'll just talk about future webinars, what we have upcoming, what we're planning for the future. Okay, let's go ahead and look into the uh, WISE planning module. A few questions just to answer for everyone before I show the screen of the application is, you know, what role for solutions do you need to have installed in order to get the planning module? Well, with the, the WISE planning module, it's actually a bolt-on option. So you can forecast using some of the ERP databases, but not installing the full ERP solution. So if you just have the warehouse management uh, module or the 3PL module, we can easily add in this uh, WISE planning module and get you access to the forecasting features. Uh, you can even leverage our uh, distribution requirements planning data entry screens and expedite ordering. Uh, what we've seen from a few customers is, besides using this for forecasting, it just helps in expediting the ordering process. You'll see in the upcoming screen how you can quickly look at all of the orders that you have, the quantities that you want to order, and how you can edit in one screen what orders or what quantities you will be ordering. Uh, lastly, as, as always, uh, we can interface with any of your other ERP systems if need be. And so we have a just a tiny diagram here to, to look at. Oh, oops, sorry, there we go. So we have the, the WISE module, uh, which can integrate into uh, the planning module and then communicate, of course, with any of those other ERP modules. In the upcoming slide, I'll talk about uh, historical data, but we can also uh, pull in any other information you have from previous transactions to make sure that the forecast is uh, has a good enough data set to give you uh, good information. Uh, what types of forecasting can you choose between and what is considered in the, the computation? Well, we have uh, three options available. Uh, option one is the min-max. Uh, it's good for short turnaround items and uh, things that you really just need to keep an eye on in the warehouse just for their their quantities, very simple calculation there. We do have also the one we recommend is the forecast by history. Uh, this is best when you do have large data sets. And uh, lastly, we have forecast just trend. Uh, have there in parentheses, you know, COVID items. What these forecast by just trend means is when you look at COVID items as an example, you know, we had a lot of items that just basically became obsolete. Uh, when they start coming back in uh, popular and people start ordering them again, you can use the forecast just using the trend. So you don't take into consideration the history of a particular item that, you know, maybe of the last two years hasn't been sold at all. So that's that third option. I have a call out here also for manual entry. Uh, this, you know, can be used in combination with any of the above three options. And it just allows you to review everything uh, based off of your forecast type. But prior to placing the order, you can go ahead and manually edit any of the entries that you have. So, well, switch over now to a uh, screen screenshot of the forecasting uh, module. You'll see up at the top, it's the purchasing DRP planning. And a few call outs to bring to your attention will point to some of these buttons here. So you do have a lookup button. And prior to hitting the lookup button, you can filter it with your binoculars that you 
probably very familiar with throughout the World 4 applications, we have these binoculars uh, scattered, and you can use that to look up and filter based off of either a vendor, manufacturer, or group number. We also have the button down here to save. So if you make any edits to the forecast, you can save those prior to placing an order. Uh, the order button here will generate POs um, for all of the filtered items that you have chosen. And then lastly, we have a reset and cancel. So if you've gone through some filtering, you've made some changes, uh, you got distracted with something else that got placed on your desk, and you just want to reset everything prior to placing that order, uh, you can use that reset button or just cancel all altogether. What we're going to do now is just populate these, the table with some, some data and bring a call out to the forecast model that we're looking at. So here on that column, uh, the third column there for forecast, you can see MX is set, and that just means that our forecasting type is set to min max. Uh, you can see there on the tab for required on hand uh, that in the first row we have uh, quantity on hand at eight, and we have a required on hand of 12. So we need we need to place an order for four. So you can see that quantity of the order is four. You can also see another example of this below where uh, this item in the table that we have selected is uh, listed at one quantity on hand, and we require eight to be uh, on hand. So we need to take a look at what we have in the other columns, whether or not we have any purchase orders already placed and any sales orders. In this example, we do have one uh, PO for quantity of four. So we'll take that into our calculation and say that you only need to place an order for uh, three. Okay, I'm gonna switch now. Uh, well, let me bring a call out here for the edit. So similar to some of the tables you've seen, uh, in the World 4 system, you can actually click into this item number table and edit the quantity to order. This is that call out for the manual edits that we were talking about in the previous slide as an option. So any of the quantity to order or any of the numbers in the column here for quantity to order can be edited by the end user and you can change that number, save, and then uh, order. I'll switch over now to the forecast type of uh, F, which is just for forecast. And I'll bring attention to the items you see here in the first column that are highlighted yellow. Uh, so we do have some that are not highlighted yellow and some that are. Why are they highlighted yellow? Well, the yellow highlights here are for items with not enough supply to meet demand. This is even taking into consideration the forecasting that we've done and still saying that we're not gonna meet the demand that we have. Uh, why is this occurring and you know how can we get more details about what's going on with these particular items? Well, one of the things I've been hiding is we do have additional information for the end user to navigate through. And so I'll, I'll bring that uh, additional tables down here now for you to see. So with the additional information on each line item, you can actually review a, a timeline of what's going on along with the other tabs. Uh, for End users that might be on older iterations of the application, um, perhaps you're not used to this interface. And just just to let you know, um, the table below will change based off of the line item that you uh, select above. So I have a few examples to make this a little bit more easier to understand. So if we look at this one line item here uh, for these tires, uh, we can see we have a quantity on hand of zero and our quantity to order is well, two. Uh, we are forecasting yes it is. that we need two. I hear some, Hi. is that a question or is that just feedback from one of the audience members? Uh, yep, I just got back here right now. Um, Richard, would you mind just muting? Okay, you got the card then. Carla? Looks like Miss Everson is uh, going through some other stuff at work. There we go, she's muted. Okay, so we'll we'll jump back into this example here. Once again, using the forecasting model of forecast, and we're talking about uh, one of our bad apples. Who, even though we have a forecasting in place, it looks like our 
forecast is telling us that we're not going to meet the demand that we have. Uh, if you look down at the timeline here, you can see that we have zero on hand, and by August 8th, we'll have a demand of four. And so that means that we will not have any stock in until 814, and even then, uh, it'll be less than two of the quantities that we need. Uh, that's here on the, the timeline tab. I'll go down to the next line item. May, may I click in here? May I comment? Yep. On go ahead. Uh, on that. Uh, yep. The, this is driven, two things are happening here. One, the approved PO is going to be too late for demand, as you said. The other is that uh, there is a configuration item that decides whether or not to use that backlog of four in the computation of the final recommendation. So there's a parameter that says, do we care about demand that pops up during the lead time? And in this case, where you're showing the screen, uh, the decision was no, because the customer goes to somebody else and orders it if you don't have it. They're not going to wait two weeks until you get it. So er ergo, the results you're seeing, even though we're showing six demand, zero on hand, we're only recommending to buy two because those four are going to go away. They're not real. Go ahead. Yep. Thank you for that, Isaac. So I'll move down just to the next line item here where you can see, uh, once again, we have zero quantity on hand. Uh, the forecast is saying that we will need two and that, that will be in uh, August 14th. So, I'm sorry, let me repeat that. On uh, August 22nd, we're forecasting that we will need two, but in this case, we're in the green because on August 14th, we will have approved the PO and we are expecting items to be arriving in. So that way we will have enough supply to meet the demand. Uh, more information on the tabs that you see now on the bottom is we do have the timeline tab. We also have the forecast tab and the, the history tab here. The history tab is really showing us where all of the uh, data is coming from to supply the forecast with its information. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, in just a bit, we'll go through the configuration table so you can see what's really driving uh, the data that you see here in the history tab. But we also have uh, tabs for sales orders and you're just getting more information about what's going on. So. It's one screen that houses all the data. So you can click on your sales order lines and actually look over, see what quantities have shipped. You can do an item inquiry using the item warehouse quantities to see where everything is throughout your organization. Uh, once you decide that you like the uh, forecast, all you have to do is click on the order button. Now this order button, once again, will create a PO. And so it's as simple as coming through uh, this screen here uh, looking up, changing any quantities that perhaps you don't like, and you can review what you see down in the tables here to make sure that your edits are what you, uh, what your warehouse demands are, and then create your PO. Again, comment, sorry. Uh, when you say create the PO, it, it depends on what environment we're in. If we are working with a, a different ERP system, we will provide that ERP system enough information to create a PO. Um, it, if we're working in the Royal Four environment with full ERP, it creates a real PO right then and there. So that creation of the PO, it creates that logical piece of information that somebody has to put okay. it wherever a PO is created in your system. Yeah, just trying to buy a little way. She said if I had Thank you. Uh, thanks for yeah, bringing that up, Isaac. And so uh, we'll move on to the, the module configuration and just take a look at the few of the screens that are required for setup on these. Uh, so we have the item planning data and you can see that we need a, for the min-max forecasting the work, we do need to have that set at the item level and you can set those up per warehouse. So if you wanna have different quantities of min-maxes per item per warehouse, you have that capability. You also need to set up a lead time 
for any of your vendors. So I'm just in the vendors maintenance setup under the general tab and need to have the lead time set up so we can accurately predict when uh, those POs will come in. And then here, Isaac, I'll um, let you talk a little bit more about what's going on, but we do need to have the scheduler set up. And so you can see here where we're collecting sales history for the forecast. And then you think back to that diagram, we saw how you can communicate data from within WISE over to the, the planning module. You'll replicate that data into WISE, giving the information, I'm sorry, replicate the data from WISE into the planning module. So your forecast has the uh, necessary information to do the computations. Um, Isaac, I did have one other slide to show just about how we have uh, the ability to substitute any items that might have been sunsetted. But before I move on, did you want to add anything else to the, uh, the scheduling function that we're or the scheduling maintenance screen that we're showing here? Yeah, well, the idea is, as you can see, if you look at the uh, ran at and next at, the idea is uh, overnight. Uh, the first thing that happens is we collect all the data we need from Y. So inventory uh, situation, uh, new sales orders, new purchase orders, whatever is happened in WISE, we collect. And then using that information, we construct the sales history and and um, and create the forecast. Um, we'll talk more about it when we talk about the, the parameter setup. But th the point is, this is all happening. You can run it. Um, Every day you can run it once a week. It's good enough, uh, and so on and so forth. So forth. Um, go ahead. Okay. Uh, the last screen I was going to show here is just going back to that uh, item planning data maintenance screen. Uh, I was under warehouses just a moment ago, but I want to bring you to the general tab and just uh, show that we do have a forecasting code. So you can have a you know an item. In this example, we're using tires. Uh, where a tire is no longer going to be used, but that historical data that we have, uh, we don't want to lose track of that because that new, t that old tire might be replaced by something new, and all of the historical data on that old tire relates directly to the new tire. Uh, this happens when you have either substitutions or just a new model that comes out. And so you do have the way to retain all of the historical information, even if an item changes. Um, Isaac, those were the screens I had to share. And the last thing I was going to uh, talk about is what's next. You know, we're, we did a few of these series in the, the webinar uh, series that we have going on, but we're interested to hear from you. You know, we'd like to see what other items you would like to uh, hear about and, and maybe dive deeper into these 20 minute sessions so we can talk to the other functions that you may have and just are not aware of how they work. Um, if you could email over to either Richard or any of your customer service reps and hear about the next uh, topic for uh, our next webinar series. Richard? Okay, thank you. Okay, our, the next in this series is gonna be um, about what's happening. Uh, for example, uh, We've been notified by UPS that they want everybody to be on 64-bit by December of this year. So if any of you are on 32-bit, you will have a problem connecting with UPS if you connect directly. So we want to know, we want to help you uh, get to 64-bit. All of our new product, all of our upgrades are 64-bit. The next thing is Microsoft next year is in the lifing their 32-bit programs and their servers, like uh, Windows 12, for example, a server version, it has an end of life in October of 2023. So at that point, they will no longer support 32-bit. So we just wanted to bring that up uh, to our customers and let you know that uh, we're prepared for it, we're prepared to help you, but we wanna give you plenty of notice that that is going to happen. Uh, for the seminar series, this is the second in the seminar series, 
and we have one scheduled for each month. Uh, nothing is in concrete yet, and that's why we'd like your input as to what you'd want to hear about. What features do you want to know more about in the system? One of the things we found in our research is most of our customers are not using all of the abilities that the system has. So if there are abilities that you see on your screens, you don't understand what they are and would like more information on them, we would be delighted to have a webinar on that. So with uh, that said, uh, the other thing I'd like to mention is our user group meeting is scheduled for next year. It will start on the 30th of April and go until May 3rd. It will be at the M Resort in uh, Las Vegas. And uh, we look forward to seeing everybody there. And there will be more details coming out in the, in the coming weeks and months about that. But we wanted to give everybody enough notification. We are recording this so that if any of you want, it will be on the website in the customer portal for you to review at any time. Uh, with that, I'd like to open it to questions. Richard, okay. sorry, may I add at least one thing? Yeah. About the, uh, the, the version you're seeing here uh, is, is an advanced version, but there is one in the making right now uh, actually already installed at one customer uh, that goes beyond uh, what you're seeing here. You can actually determine a target as in how much cubic feet you want, how much money you want to spend, how many items you want to order, or, or what is the maximum weight you want to accommodate. And that is for situations where, for example, you need to order a container from your vendor, a full container. Uh, and so at first the system is gonna look and see what's ideal for today, but let's say you're short of the container. You can say, okay, now shoot for a container and it'll increase the, the days that it looks forward enough to find the best combination of what needs to go into that container and your PO will become a full container order. So that's one example. Other examples are, um, you know, if you spend twenty thousand dollars more with a vendor, you get a discount for the whole year. So what's the best twenty thousand dollars? The ways to spend the twenty thousand dollars, that kind of stuff. So just wanted to make sure everybody knows that's available. Excellent. And. Richard, uh, I know you mentioned you'd like to open up the floor to questions. Uh, I can toggle back to any one of the uh, screenshots that we have there. Some questions that the audience has about what you just saw, the different types of forecasting available. Once again, you have the min-max, the forecast by history, and the forecast by just trend. Okay, so it's open for questions. Well, I have a question uh, regarding the uh... So the forecast by history. So um, uh, does that take into consideration like if you shorted a customer? Uh, the answer to that is yes. Uh, if we have the information of what was ordered, we go by what was requested and when it was requested to be shipped, not by what you actually invoiced. Okay. So as long as the information is available, the answer is yes. That's one of the setup parameters. And, and I recommend it always be set to requested date and as ordered. Does the, okay. uh, does the forecasting take into account any seasonality or cyclical trends? Absolutely. We found that seasonality is the strongest indicator even on items that you would not even think are seasonal, but somehow everything seems to have an ebb and flow. So yes, okay, thank you. actually that is the main difference between um, just full forecast and forecast by trend. Um, the, the forecast by trend is shorter term and does not include considerations for seasonality because somehow either we don't have enough information you need two years 
that's the recommended uh, length of information we require. Uh, and uh, because we not only look at what proceeded in the last year, we we merged that year to year and and strengthened or weakened the seasonal effect. You know, because sometimes you have loop types of orders. Um, so yes, seasonality is very important. And two years is very important because the second year tells you, I mean, the, the closest history year uh, and how it relates to the year before that shows you if a product is on an upswing long-term or, 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 or falling off the cliff. So uh, that, that's included in that consideration too. And just to add on to the fir first question, uh, if you substituted an item, uh, the forecast is going to be based on the original item that was ordered, not the sub item. Uh, that is correct. Okay. That is correct. The, the whole idea is if you, if you, uh, if you forecast as invoiced, then whatever mistakes you made in the past, you're going to repeat. Because if you didn't have, if you were short, you'll be short again. Right. So. Good questions. Keep them coming. Yeah, I've, I've got a question. Um, so it looks like to me, this is more for, um, you know, if we had our own merchandise that we, that we bought and sold and shipped out. Um, for our operations out here, we're you know, third-party logistics. We don't own any of the product that we store for our clients. Uh, is there, could this be used maybe for like forecasting for space needs within our warehouse? Like, are there other ways that we could use this for planning? Uh, the forecast has been used for other purposes. We'll need to delve more into what information you have and how we can use it to do the forecast. Uh, but for example, we used it at one of our customers to, they had, uh, they had uh, bulk stock and they have flow racks. And they wanted to know uh, in the flow racks, what are their moving items? What are their forecasted moving items so they can position, you know, higher, lower, and better locations and so on. And we use the forecast of what's going to move to tell them how to change the utilization of the flow racks to accommodate the best items that should be there. And, and you know, as far as not just being there, but what height to accommodate uh, optimal picking at, 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 you know, chest level. So yeah, we've, we've used it that way. It's, it's doable. Uh, I'd like to add something and uh, Isaac, correct me on how it would happen, but you would be able to do this for your customers and help them ship enough to you so that you can fulfill their orders. So this would be another service that you could offer to your customers and of course charge them for it. And, and actually that, that, that's a very good answer in the sense that if you do that, your usage of your space will be optimized too. Uh, because uh, it, 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 one of the questions on, on the configuration screen is how long do you want the inventory on hand? once you get it into the warehouse, okay? And, and the answer to that drives a lot of numbers and, and a lot of what ends up on the PO. And that's very important because uh, a lot of places just have dead inventory holding up space and then very little space for the inventory that they really need. So it's, 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 it's a great optimizer of, of space. Stephen, does that answer your question? Good. Thank you. Yes, it does. Thank you.
anymore. Well, if there are no more questions, I want to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, and uh, please uh, send us your comments and any things that you would like to see in the future, and we will schedule them for future webinars. Uh, we appreciate you. We appreciate your input. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. <laughs>